everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about Fenty by Nanetti Okorafor. Um, I got this book out of the April Noir Reads Black to the Future book box and so I will tag that video and Noir Reads um, above, okay? Um, in this link here. Um, so let's just get right into it. For the non-spoiler description, these don't have any spoilers, Binti is about a girl named Binti and um, she is part of a tribe called the Himba, the, the Himba people or the Himba people, I'm not sure which one, um, the Himba people, um, but she's a little bit different than them. She has, she has more goals and aspirations to go outside of her home and go, you know, learn things, which she gets the opportunity to do when she is invited to go to the great Uzma University, um, which is a huge, huge deal because it is a place where all of the greatest scholars and um, smart people of this universe go to cultivate their knowledge, um, enhance their already um, skills in whatever they do, and um, so. Binti is invited to go. No one in her tribe has ever, ever really left where they live. They don't believe in that. They believe in staying where they are, being with family, and being some of the greatest creators, being some of the greatest creators ever. And so when she got this opportunity, she was conflicted on what she wanted to do. Oh, I guess I should put one book. She got the opera, got the she got conflicted on the opportunity of what she wanted to do because it meant going against everything that her family normally does and she figured she'd be because no one ever does that she'd be the only person to attend Uzma University or I'm saying no um, Umza not Uzma Umza University um, from her tribe and so she so in this whole entire community of scholars she'd be the only person there that, like her with her cultures and her values and that is something you know that's really scary to go be a part of something very different than you and um and to be to be a first to be a pioneer in that aspect but she decided that she was going to go so she snuck out in the middle of the night um in her like hovercraft type of in her ship type of craft thing um, to go be at the train station where all of her transportation is paid for. Everything is paid for for her to go. And so all she had to do was say yes and to go. So she gets there and she is basically the only brown girl in the sea of people called Kush. The Kush people, um, now the Kush people believe that they are better than the Himba people. I think mainly because they don't know the Himba people because like I said, the Himba never ever leave where they live. Um, so while she's there, she's getting stared at, she's getting looks. Um, she has this on her face, which is part of her culture. It's called Otich. Oh my god, I'm gonna say this wrong. Um, Ochitsi? Ochitsi? I feel like I know I'm saying that wrong, but it's part of her culture and it means and it's so important to them. They never ever wash it off. Um, she talks about in the book how her and her friend snuck into a lake and they washed it off and they immediately felt like they had done something seriously wrong because it's part of their culture to have it on them. Um, they feel one with the earth, one with nature. And so this is this is part of her. She puts it in her hair, she puts it on her skin. And so people consider, or people outside of their tribe consider them dirt bathers or just general dirty people. But you know, they're still very clean people. Um, her hair is different. Um, the way I am at, you know, she, she's able to braid her hair. If I, you know, I naturally have really thick curly hair, um, not this, this is crochet style and I love it. But normally I've got really thick curly hair that you probably see in some other videos. And it, it, you know, and it has to be braided back. And so she braids it, you know, she braids it back and people are touching her hair and they expect to feel one thing and it feels completely different or they expect her to smell and she doesn't smell at all and all of these things are pretty common in um when you're different going somewhere new so i really like that netty okorafor brought these types of things into picture but to continue on with the story um she gets she 
summons up her courage. She gets on the she gets on the train and then she gets on the ship to start a new life. And um, from there, everything everything starts over. Everything's new. So I mean, that's that's all I can give you for 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 spoiler free. Is she gets on the train and she's ready to go because it is only a novella, so it's really tiny. Sorry, I tried to start doing this the tabbing thing, and I'm not very good at it. I don't have a good system down for it yet, so not very helpful right now. That's the, that's the end of my spoiler-free portion. Now, for the spoilery part, okay, now remember, if you haven't read this, go ahead and turn off this video, go read it, it will not take long. Like, it's like 80 pages. Um, let me see, no. It is 90 pages, okay? <laughs> um, so, for the spoiler part. So, as I finished off, she gets on this train and she's meeting new people. She's loving it. She's meeting people who can do the same sort of crazy math that she can do. You know, people who are, you know, want to learn, want to grow, want to do this, that, and the other. And she is loving it. She thinks she's even already met a guy that she really likes. She's a little nervous to talk to him, but she she's really enjoying herself so far. And they haven't even gotten to school yet. They're literally on this space. There's this. Bleh, this spacecraft, spacecraft, this spacecraft going from their world to Umza University, which is farther off in the galaxy, um, when basically shit hits the fan. She's at lunch one day, she's at lunch one day, when all of a sudden she hears a scream and there is a something protruding from her friend's chest and these creatures called the Meduse are there and from what I can tell the well not from what I can tell the Meduse are basically a rival or a conflicting group of people group of individuals and um, they have been in some sort of battle or war with them for as long as anybody can remember um, and then next thing Binti knows is they are on her ship. What bothers me, um, and okay, well, well, next thing Binti knows they are on her ship and they are able to kill everyone but her. Like they don't come near her. Someone tries to touch her, someone tries to touch her and then that Medusa immediately gets like a shriveled up like tentacle like thing and is dying or I think or I think also one of them might have died by touching her. Um, so she is different, so that is lucky for her because she's the only survivor on the ship. Um, but I, this is where I started to have so many problems with this book just because I was so confused with how it all went down. So I'll start in on my problems now. All of a sudden there is this other race on this the spaceship as they're going to the university and they have killed everybody. I'm over here like, how did they get on the ship? Like these people are supposed to be so smart and how'd they get on the ship? They might have have told us how they did it, um, how they did it and I missed it or I just forgot because it's been a little bit since I finished this one. Um, but there are just so many questions and then all of a sudden she could talk to and understand them. It's something to do with her item that she had found that nobody knew what it was or what it was for. And so then all of a sudden she could talk to them and then in order for them to trust her, when she figured out a way for her to get out alive, for them to get out alive, and for them to get on this planet, all of a sudden they just like become friends and or not really friends but allies. And for them to trust her she is basically killed well you know they do their little tentacle thing into her back or something and then she's basically killed and then next you know she looks partially like them and I'm like well now she's just changed her whole identity on who she is she can never go home because she's different now even more different than she already was and there are just so many so many things that just started to bother me and I was just like I just gotta finish it because I've got so many questions um, and then she makes it to Uza University and she has to basically tell her story and tell what happened and try and represent the Medusa um, so that way they don't kill them all because apparently Umza has something of the Medusa one of their um, like most prized bodily possessions um, it's like they have kind of like 
kind of, not like a talon, but kind of like a claw or a pincher type thing, um, which is kind of how it's described. And they use that in battle. Basically, their chiefs got cut off, and he wants it back. That's where a lot of this discord comes from. He wants his stuff back. And so, she, you know, Ben D manages to talk to the heads of um Umza, Uzma, Umza, no, Umza, the head, and gets them to basically give it back. And then she, she is at school, going to her classes, doing very complicated math that I can barely do calculus. And, <laughs> and she's, she's learning, and her, but now they've got one of the Medus there that they've left there, that the rest of the Medusa clan have left there on goodwill, her friend, or now her new friend, I'm gonna say, um, Oku, 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 O-K-W-U, um, who is one of the Medusa and one of the generals, um, was left there to also attend Umza to, to get whatever knowledge they are willing to offer him. But the two of them are still very different and they're still treated very differently throughout their time there and honestly like that's literally how it ends she gets her stuff back they're now at university and yeah ending ending and i was like has that the end are there more there better be more because I, there's so many things just left unanswered and unsaid and so many questions and all of those things just really really bothered me <laughs> And so I had to, and so hopefully I will um, read the next one and get some of those questions answered. Overall though, I still really, even though with all those questions and all those problems, I still really liked it. I think I still gave it four stars, maybe. I don't remember what I said in my last video. Three and a half, four stars, maybe four and a half to five, just because I like the concept. I love the sci-fi part and I love the... The topics that are brought up, you know, being different, of races, not accepting others, and just what it's like to be the only somewhere and to be representing a whole entire people, though really when you only want to represent yourself, but you have the, but you don't have that kind of privilege, basically by you being there, you represent a whole entire people now. So, um, so I still really liked it, and I want to read the next one, and I'm going to add it to my ever-growing TBR pile. But if you've read this, let me know what you think. I know my review is probably horrendous and terrible and rambly, um, but let me know what you thought of it and what you think of the rest of the novellas because they're on my TBR list for the future. Um, if you haven't read it, um, let me know if you plan on reading it or, um, you know, or check out the Noir Read subscription box. That's where I got this one from. But that's it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like this video, hit that subscribe button so that you see my next videos or want to follow me on the social medias. And until next time, keep turning the pages.